गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन सो लेट्स स्टार्ट दी कोर्स ग्राफ एंड नेटवर्क इन दिस कोर्स द बुक विच वी आर गोइंग टू फॉलो इज दिस वन ऑफकोर्स आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू फॉलो एवरी थिंग फ्रॉम द बुक बट यस द फ्लो कैन बी सीन फ्रॉम द बुक सो इंट्रोडक्शन टू ग्राफ थ्योरी ग्राफ थ्योरी सो वी बिलीव दैट इट बिगेन इन सेवनटीन थर्टी सिक्स विद द कॉनिक्सबर्ग ब्रिज प्रॉब्लम and eiler was the first one who gave the solution to this problem then in after 200 years in 1936 the first book got published on graph theory graph theory has mainly three branches so one is theoretical one is algorithmic and the last one is algebraic here algebraic mainly deals with matrices so in this course we are going to see all three aspects of graph theory theoretical as well as algorithmic and algebraic so let's see some interesting problems which gives us the motivation that why should we study graphs and how the problems can be easily solved when modeled using graph theory so we start with the problem of bridges of konigsberg So in the figure you can see that there were seven bridges and four positions are there. From these four positions, of course, you can go from one position to the other through the bridges. Now the problem is that you need to start with any one of the bridge. Let's say you start with this one, and then you have to go through all the bridges. but you have to visit them only once and you have to visit all and return back to the same position so it says that make a round trip through konigsberg traversing each bridge exactly once you cannot miss any one and you cannot visit it twice the question is is it possible or not if yes how so to solve this problem first it was modeled using graphs so here graph means that what we did these four positions we denoted them as vertex because it doesn't matter the size of these four positions we just need a representation and if there is a bridge between any of these positions then it is represented by a line either a straight line or a curved line doesn't matter this is how we draw a graph now the problem is that you need to start with any one of them let's say i start from here i go there then from there i go there then this bridge then this bridge then this bridge now wherever i go i am stuck i cannot come back to b2 if i started at b2 so the problem is you start at any vertex go along each edge exactly once and ending up the starting vertex so in this case it's not possible and eiler proved that it has no solution you need to we will discuss it in chapter 5 but what would be the modification in the graph so that the above problem has a solution let's say you need to delete the minimum number of the bridges so that the problem has a solution so try it by yourself i can give you one example so if i consider this graph where i deleted two edges then you can see that in this case i can come back to this any position from where i start let's say i start from here so i go there then i move straight then i go there then here and then reaching back here okay you can try various possibilities but under what condition it happens in general that was given by eiler and it says that if for each vertex there are even number of the edges which are which are incidenting to it so in this case you can see this number is 3 3 5 and 
but when I change the graph then this number is 2, 4, 2 and 2 even number of the edges are incidenting to each vertex and in that case it's always possible the graphs for which it is possible are called Euler graph which we are going to discuss in the chapter 5 the next problem so let us consider that we have five jobs seven qualified applicants so if there is an edge between an applicant and a job we say it is qualified is the company able to meet its hiring need which means that we need an applicant for each job is it possible that for all the five jobs can we have applicants so if you try it by yourself you will find that it's not possible because for job 1 and 4 there is only one applicant so if a2 goes to j1 then for j4 there is no applicant this problem is known as the matching problem which we are going to discuss in chapter 10 one more problem it says that let c1 c2 cn are different kinds of the chemicals where an edge denotes that there is a grave danger if you put them together so the problem is what is the minimum number of the warehouses the factory needs in order to store its chemical products safely so if you put them all in a different warehouses then in if we have seven warehouses we are done but that is not the optimization we need the minimum one so I can start with any one of them let's say C1 I put in warehouse 1 then we can see that we cannot put together C1 and C2 because there is an edge between them so I have to put it in another warehouse C3 again there is an edge between C2 C3 and C1 C3 so I need a new warehouse for it C4 I can see that there is no edge between C1 and C4 so I can put it in the first one C5 I can put in the second one and C6 in the third one but C7 there is an edge between C1 C7 C2 C7 and C6 C7 therefore I need a new warehouse in that case I can say that the answer is 4 so this is a coloring problem actually we need an algorithm to find this number because we can see easily the counter examples where this approach may not work or mathematically if you want to prove it then we have to prove that it is not possible to have one two or three warehouses so let's define the graph so a graph is a finite non-empty set of vertices called nodes and possibly an empty set of two element subset of vertex set called edges yes so for example I can draw the graph first I define the non empty set so 1 2 3 4 then how an edge is defined for example it's a two element subset of so this is how the edge is defined you can also have an edge with starting from the same vertex and ending up with the same vertex you can also have more than one edge between two vertex you can also leave any vertex with no edge incidenting to it so this is one of the graph or you can make the graph like this this is also a graph this is 4 so vg is the vertex set then edge set and edge is represented as u v v u also remember that when i am writing u v it is same as v u because it has no direction if 3 if there is an edge between 3 to 4 we can also say that there is an edge between 4 to 3 now few important terminologies so elements of the vertex set are called vertices elements of edge set are called edges if an edge is denoted as uv it means u and v are called end vertices of edge e if both 
vertex set and edge set are finite we call it a finite graph otherwise infinite graph usually throughout the course when we are talking of a graph it means we are talking of a finite graph so this is an example of a graph where the vertex set is u1 u2 u3 u4 u5 and edge set has six edges this is an important slide to show that a graph can be represented in many ways but in any case it is the same graph so you can see the multiple representation of the graph now let's talk few more terminologies the number of vertices in a graph is called its order and the number of edges is called its size this is very important two vertices are adjacent if there is an edge between them so if there is an edge between u v i say that u and v are adjacent two edges are in adjacent if they have a common end vertex so e and f are adjacent if they have a common end vertex a vertex and an edge are incident so this is the vertex this is an edge if u is an end vertex of e so they simply follow a very simple logic a loop so loop is a new definition which is having the same end points or end vertices so this is a loop then multiple edges we have already discussed so between two vertices if there is more than one edge we call them the multiple edges and we say a vertex is isolated if it is not adjacent to any of the vertices so if you consider the same example then the end vertices of e2 is u1 u3 we can see that u1 u2 are adjacent while u1 and u5 or u4 are not adjacent even e2 are adjacent because they have the common end point but e1 and e5 are not adjacent e2 e3 are multiple edges or we can call them the parallel edges u4 is adjacent to itself of course u4 is also adjacent to u3 but it is also adjacent to itself because there is a loop and similarly e6 is adjacent to e5 but it is also adjacent to itself because of the loop u5 is an isolated vertex let's consider some interesting questions now so the first question says that draw all distinct unlabeled graphs of order 4 having no loops and multiple edges first thing is that we have talked of unlabeled because let's consider this graph if i label them 1 2 3 and if i label them as 1 2 3 these two graphs are distinct because here 2 is adjacent to 1 and 3 but in this case 1 is adjacent to 2 and 3 so i labeled them i gave them the name and that's why they are called labeled graph generally if it is not mentioned we are talking of the unlabeled graph only so now you need to draw all distinct unlabeled graphs of order 4 so please do try it by yourself so i can start with the first one when I do not introduce an edge now if I introduce an edge then there is only one choice so the graph is unique sorry this is uh, this should not come this is the second one only one edge would come then the third one there are two edges of adding an edge so either 
I can add an edge between two isolated vertex or I can keep one isolated vertex. So this gives me the fourth. Now for the fifth one I add one more edge. So if I add an edge to the third one then it looks like this one. Now for the fourth one there are two ways of adding the edge. One is I can keep one isolated vertex. So this is the sixth one and the other one is I do not have an isolated vertex. So this is the seventh one. Now I add one more edge. So if I add an edge to the fifth one then I get this possibility or there is one more possibility that instead of these two vertex I can add somewhere in the middle something like this now to the sixth one also if I add an edge between an isolated vertex and any other vertex I always get the graph which I got in ninth so therefore there is no case which is left behind same is the case for the seventh one so I move further and to the eighth one I add an edge that gives me the tenth one and the last one is this one yes so please do observe that we are computing all distinct one for example to the sixth one if you add an edge this is one possibility you can also add an edge like this now these two graphs are same they look different but actually they are same because this triangle in this triangle all three vertices are same so therefore to any vertex to make to make it adjacent to isolated vertex all three ways are same let's try one more question draw all distinct unlabeled graphs of order 5 and size 10 having no loops and multiple edges so order 5 please do try it by yourself now I need to keep adding the edges so I can start with the first one so I make it adjacent to all now second one I can make adjacent to all then the third one keep doing in the same way and the fourth one so actually we will get a unique graph and this graph is we will discuss it later but it is a complete graph where each vertex is adjacent to all other vertices and there are no loops and multiple edges draw all distinct graphs of order 4 with each vertex adjacent to exactly two vertices and having no loops and multiple edges. Again, there is only one such graph, which is this one, which is a cycle graph of length 4. Okay, so that's all from today's class. Please keep attending the lectures. Thank you very much.